Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Hi, welcome to another episode of Rural Heritage on RFD TV. Last week we looked at produce and haymaking equipment demonstrated at the 2018 Horse Progress Days held in Clare, Michigan. This week we turn our camera on traditional field equipment like spreaders, planters, plows, cultivators, and other row crop tillage tools. So here is our first piece of equipment of the morning. This is uh, from Farmer's Equipment. This is the one horse manure spreader in front of you here. It's a 25 uh, cubic foot 25, uh, model here. It sells for $3,850. And uh, they also have a, for $33.50, a two-wheel trailer type plow. This one has the seat on it, of course, so it's a, it's a completely con uh, self-contained unit. This is uh, from Easy uh, Spreader Manufacturer, the Herb family out in Ohio. This is the 30 bushel model, sells for $2,350. And they do have the 75, 55, 35, and 25 bushel available as well. And they have poly floors on their spreaders. They have the 11 gauge powder coated steel sides. All the roller chains on these spreaders are, are T-rod T web and bronze bush. They have the bronze bushing bearings on them as well. So this, you can get a litter pan on this one as well as a tailgate, air wheels, steel wheels, or steel with the rubber bolted on wheels. So there's three different kinds of wheels you can get on here too. So we'll see that one work there. We have the uh, Model 50 Leicester Manure Spreader. That's a 50 bushel with the optional litter pan. Does that, that has the litter pan on it, I believe? Yep. Lancaster Spreader has been making spreaders now for uh, quite a number of years down in Kirkwood, Pennsylvania. Started out on uh, the farm too, a dairy farm. Started out actually uh, repairing and rebuilding New Idea manure spreaders. Uh, so that's how this company got started. They say this is their most popular model. With over, They sold over 500 units last year. Uh, they have a tailgate that can go on there and of course the litter pan and the wheel jack as well. Okay, now this looks like uh, the same colors here as the old new idea spreaders that I talked about a little while ago. Here's a couple. Uh, yeah, this one's self-contained, of course, without the four card on it. So here's, uh, this one has the air wheels on it, of course. It's a 75 bushel, sells for 55, 50. Uh, the, um, 55, 35, 30 bushel, 25 bushel. Again, the poly floor is just like the other one. Uh, of course, but a much bigger unit here. They do have options on here that are pan tailgate lime attachment. So you can get a lime attachment here. That's a nice feature for in the fall if you want to lime some of your fields. There's another Lancaster spreader then. This is the 100 bushel model. Um, and uh, options again on this one. Uh, this is just stepping up a little bit. You see the spreader pattern on here and the, uh, the web chain and so on. All the good components that uh, Lancaster spreader puts into their, all their units. Okay, now we are uh, through with our manure spreaders for this year and the poly fertilizer spreader. I don't know, I think this spreader maybe has been at almost every horse progress stage. So John just said he started out putting the gears, the uh, mechanism under here from a number seven mowing machine. Uh, it's a very first horse progress stage. It shows this very similar uh, piece of equipment down there, but now they've started again making uh, their own. So that's, that's a pattern that's taken place over and over. Uh, started on a, 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 a design that someone else had and then make it into your own design and keep it working. So that's what's, what's going on with this poly fertilizer spreader here. And it's been to every horse progress days, I think, from the very beginning. 1775 is the price on that very uh, economical piece of equipment and uh, a mainstay for, for uh, easy spreader. Spinners are stainless steel. The spinners are stainless steel, so they're going to last longer, yep. And that thing can spread. You betcha. Then we have the Kirkwood spreader there on the back. That's a two-ton spreader, sells for $7,500. From Kirkwood Repair Shop down in Kirkwood, Pennsylvania. Gateway is their dealer up here. They do have a five-ton unit available as well. And they say this unit works great for fertilizer, but also for uh, compost, which is, I believe, what we have on there today. And also, you can use it for tick turkey litter. Chicken litter, I would imagine, as well. Now we're into the plow. 
This particular one is uh, what they call the seven, number 715 leaf spring, leaf spring sulky plow. It's got the 14 inch keystone bottoms on it, which means that this plow from the bottom to the top is white horse designed and white horse produced. Uh, white horse is making their own bottoms now, making them available to other plow makers as well. White horse, you know, has been making hydraulic plows for many years and they're fantastic. They're also expensive. Uh, they're still very popular, I think, in uh, certain parts of the country, especially down in Lancaster County where there's lots of rocks. But this leaf spring is uh, White Horse's response to uh, the expense of, of, of a hydraulic uh, plow. And I, I think this might be the first Horse Progress Days, I'm not sure about this, but where we don't even have, uh, we don't actually have a, a White Horse hydraulic plow, plow to demonstrate. Here we come with the Pioneer Plow. Pioneers and other companies have put a lot of time and effort R&D into their plows. Very important. Hands-free operation here. Keep your hands on the line. Furrow wheel for better control. And all, that's really important when you come up out of the uh, out of the ground at the end of the row. You want to turn to the right. That uh, wheel will will swivel in the back there and bring you right, bring your plow right around. Right around. Now this has a convertible bottom on it. That's a bottom that uh, Pioneer introduced uh, to uh, the horse farming world just a number of years ago. It's a very popular uh, bottom that works. It turns the soil nice and even. You can see how it, it just turns the soil over there. It's more efficient as it slices through the ground than many than the uh, Oliver and the John Deere's, which are more more abrupt and make more maybe in some cases depending on the kind of uh, soil that you're plowing, will the uh, the soil be a little more chunky with the, with those plow bottoms. This is excellent also for cover crops, which of course gives better weed control. This is really what farming is all about, isn't it? At least a big big part of it, weed control. It's really nice to see those nice straight rows of corn and soybeans and and uh, there's alfalfa plants coming up but the weeds tend to want to come right alongside of them so what what can you do for weed control there's some seminars in there that will tell you about that today too but that's very important and they say this is great for the organic farmer too here it's excellent in clay and muck type soil it's got the long mold board on there that's the convertible bottom that we talked or mold board that we talked about there for a smooth continuous furrow and the parts heat, are heat treated to last four to six times longer than conventional parts. A lot of engineering and good design in this plow here as well. This one has the tongue on it too for turning. Here is another uh, white horse uh, plow. This is the two-way plow. Um, this is probably the first new two-way plow that's been manufactured in the country for I don't know how many years. But there were a lot of the old John Deere and Oliver plows out there, uh, two-way plows that they're actually still out there. They've been rebuilt, rebuilt, rebuilt time and time again. But like anything else, it's getting harder and harder to keep them rebuilt and keep all the parts uh, in, in place for them. So this is uh, this is White Horse's response to their customer's request for a two-way plow. And of course, you can see this one is designed with the leaf spring reset on there too. Very important. This is a number 732, sells for $5,010. You can get those uh, spring cultures with skimmers on there too. Uh, sometimes this is called a hillside plow because you go out to the end of the row with this plow, you turn around and come right back and you put the other side in the ground. So uh, here you have no dead furrows in the middle of your field and uh, you have, even if you're farming on a hill and you want to plow all everything up the hill, you can do that here. Uh, so this is a really nice piece of equipment. Uh, it's ideal for produce farmers that do double cropping and have narrow land strips. You know, out to the end, turn around, come back, very easy. It's got that foot activated clutch that'll lift the plow out of the ground without the hand lever. You can use the hand lever to adjust up and down as you're plowing, but to bring the plow out, hit your foot uh, lever and up it comes. The tongue is offset with it to be adaptable for two, three, and four horses. And this mechanical two-way plow is in production since 2016, not for a long time there. And it's the first of its kind with these. Okay, here we have the very, very uh, popular design uh, Pioneer uh, plow. Now, this is they calling a prototype because it has some features on it that they uh, just implemented. And one is now you see on top of this plow also the uh, leaf, the uh, spring reset. In addition to the rock plow's raised platform, which puts the operator way up over top of the horses there. Nice uh, for looking ahead and, and really being in charge. Uh, the ultimate view of the furrow between your team and of course in almost any configuration. Features on this one that are bit, uh, are the spring lift, uh, spring assist, foot lift again here, the convertible leaf spring reset that you see on top there. The raised platform provides that view that I talked about. 
the convergent engineered in beam uh, bottom and spring, and the easily adjustable horizontal line of draft without looking at your ether. I don't know if you showed that there at all, uh, that line of draft. Um, anyway, it's adjustable, easily adjustable. I guess it's with a pin there, yeah. So that's the Pioneer plow you see in front of you. This one sells for 2,183. Uh, and they say this is their early model orange plow. One of the first white horse has been, uh, one of the first of white horse has been a reliable, simple model for 40, nearly 40 years. So here's a plow, very basic plow, uh, the salty plow, step up from a walking plow actually, uh, that they've been making for almost 40 years down there at white horse. And this lightweight plow resembles the first model built after the walking plow here, sometimes known as the riding plow. It's got the adjustments right there in front of you. Uh, just not quite as sophisticated as some of the other plows. So we're moving up now in size of the plows and horsepower, and here we have now, for the first time, the rope and pulley system in front of us. Maybe we'll start with that a little bit. This is the, the rope and pulley system was actually introduced at the very first Force Progress Day. It's really interesting now, looking back, to realize how how this has worked. Uh, but the rope and pulley system is the model for uh, all the other things that have come along, sort of in a way, uh, collaborations and things that have changed the way the horse farming is done. So that rope and pulley system is a way for uh, the multiple hitches to work together and each horse has to do its job. You see that the, uh, the, the, the rope, the nylon rope there is tied off at the back of the back horse's traces there. It comes through the pulley, comes up to the traces and is tied off to the, uh, to the traces of the front horse, which means that the two horses in tandem there are working together just like a team side by side would be working together. It's a very beautiful system. Okay, now on the plow, that's the uh, Pioneer Gang plow, that's the popular, probably the one that's the, the most popular model that the Pioneer has made over the years. It has that elevated platform which is very popular, provides an unobstructed view, and of course the tongue then turns the front and rear, rear furrow wheel for better control. Foot latch on there for your hands when you're driving into the furrow. And then it's got the KB bottoms on, organic, excellent for cover crops, better weed control, good for the organic farmer especially, and it's good in clay and muck type soils, that's the convertible bottom. It's got that long mold board on it with the slower twist that we talked about earlier, and of course the heat treated parts. Very, very nice uh, piece of equipment there. With lots, again, uh, lots of innovations built into it. You see that uh, handle there under the, uh, with the, with the silver uh, handle, the top on it there for adjusting the, the width of the furrow that you want to plow. It's got that nice wheel on the side there that is a uh, mark of Pioneer as well. And uh, so there you go, nice piece of equipment. Okay, now we're up to six here again. Now we have then on the uh, plow, this is the uh, number 725 Leaf Spring Trailer Plow became popular horse-drawn plows as forecarts and tandem hitches were developed. So the old plows uh, preceded this one. White Horse borrowed several ideas from that bygone era and combined them with their latest new designs and developed this model, 725 Leaf Spring Reset Plow. There's that Leaf Spring Reset on the top there again. The rear wheel here locks in position while plowing and then it casters freely when the plow is lifted. So it goes out of gear when the plow is lifted and comes, turns right around and, and uh, comes back in. Ground drive mechanical clutch lifts the plow to a consistent height even if it's set deep for plowing and a stable and well-balanced plow for rocky conditions, they say. They can add weights on the side. They have a couple weights. On, they have one weight on the side over here now uh, for hard soil conditions. And of course, you can get the Keystone Oliver John Deere bottoms on here, 12, uh, 14, or 16 inch. Here's another collaboration now with Better Way equipment. They put a little piece on there that they could pull the Better Way roller basket behind here and maybe save a trip over the field. This is a 48 inch roller basket, sells for $700. And uh, Mullet's Machinery and Parts is where that came from. It says the roller is made to break down large chunks and to help with tillage, and it makes it better for the horses to move on the plowed ground. That's a nice feature. It can reduce a pass before planting, and it doesn't make the plow pull much harder. It's a standard feature on here. It's a detachable tongue for custom to custom fit your plow. It weighs 280 pounds. Uh, of it, Oh, no, I'm sorry. 280 pounds of additional weight can be added depending on your soil and the weights will not add anything to the tongue weight. So that's a nice feature there. Okay, now here is uh, um, a plow that uh, has not been at Horseful Progress days before. It's actually a manufacturer from Canada. 
called, uh, they call their company Salem Plow and Planter. So we're happy to have them here this year. Uh, this is the closest we get to Canada, I believe, right here in Michigan. So you just go east a little bit and you're in Ontario. Now this is a two bottom uh, plow. Um, you can get the um, 12, 14 on here bottoms. Uh, and you can, uh, that has to do with the, with the dress. There you go. Yeah, we, yeah, right there. Okay, so this is really important on hillsides or if you want to straighten out a furrow. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, uh, the uh, moving up front. So that, that right there, that's an unusual feature on this plow to allow you to take a little bit of a wider furrow. Even, even here, if you see your conditions are good, it's plowing easy, you want to take a little bit of wider furrow, you can do that. Or if you're in hard, hard conditions and you want to narrow the furrow a little bit, that lever right there to your right will do it for you. And if you're on a hill and you're coming around the hill and the plow wants to come in against the hill, you know, you just move that lever a little bit and you got a little more of a bite on the point of the plow. Again, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but the point of draft on these plows is really, really important. And the, the design to get the power from the horses to the point of draft in the most efficient manner is what makes things work the best. This is now the Shipshe Cultimulture, and the story behind this Cultimulture is that 12 years ago, uh, Maynard Miller from Indiana came up here uh, with the first uh, Cultimulture that was, uh, I think, there was a guy in Kentucky, he may have demonstrated one, I'm not sure, but he didn't keep up with it, and then Maynard came here and demonstrated one, and went home with a pocket full of orders for Cultimulture, and that launched the Cultimulture a phenomenon that we've seen in horse farming in the last uh, 12 years, actually. It's a short period of time. But these uh, cultivars now are being made by many different manufacturers all over the country. We have good representation of them here. Horse Progress Days, you'll see a, a few more of them out here a little bit. This is a five-footer. It's got that front adapter on it. Sometimes some of the others that uh, Shipshin will bring out here will have just an even evener on it and attached right to the uh, to the uh, cultivar. But this one does have the tongue and the front adapter on it there, which is a nice feature for turning. Uh, uh, they're very heavy steel and very heavy and will pulverize the soil. This is the Pioneer Cultimulter. Now we're moving up in design and size here. And again, uh, again you see uh, how these uh, tines go into the ground too. Another thing I might mention here on these tines is it was the very first horse progress days. We'll see a, a, a 9J cultivator out here a little bit later, but these tines got introduced. They're Scandinavian tines. See the Danish tines, Denmark. Got introduced at the very horse progress days on INJ cultivators. And INJ, uh, that is still the main ultimate seedbed preparation here again. You do more in one pass with this cultivator. It's got the articulating center, which we've already demonstrated, 180 degrees without dragging or leaving skippers. S times along the front there. One. So here you have a different set of S times along the front. Then you got the crumbler coming along behind. 17 inch independent rolling crumblers. Crush the clod before they dry in the sun. And then the rear cage rollers leave the neatly tilled surface. Look at that. Improved seed germination. We talked about that a little bit before. That's very important. So, uh, you have 4 foot, 6 foot, 8 foot, 10 foot. Uh, and the horsepower recommended here, they have outlined here as well. They recommend six, 4 horses for the 6 foot, 6 for the 8, and 8 for the 10. Uh, if you want to go out and spend some time in the field. Another great piece of equipment from the Pioneer Company. And what you see in front of you now, with the two really well trained for just being yearly, it reminds me of Little House in the Prairie book. But a lot of, uh, many, many parts of the world are not, do not have access to tractor power like we have here in the West. And uh, not even small tractors. And, and for many parts of the world, even the kind of equipment that we see used here at Horse Progress Days is much too big and impractical for parts of the world where Animals are small or not even, even non-existent. So this this Tillers International is who's out here. We're represented with these uh, with these oxen, and this uh, planter that you see is a collaboration effort between Tillers International and Pioneer Equipment to build a piece of equipment that is actually a no-till uh, planter for use in cat countries in Africa that are food insecure. Okay, now here's the Pioneer pine weeder. Uh, this is a uh, fairly new piece of equipment for Pioneer, I think. Uh, they say it's uh, the, the, the weeder is a weed control solution for organic farmers that they the organic farmers have been searching for. And I think there's some truth to that. It's ideal for farmers looking to weed four rows with just two horses with no need for costly hydraulics or tiresome precision driving like you would have to do with the cultivator. 
Uh, that's something I hadn't really thought about, but of course, it's, it's very true. Uh, you can weed up to four rows. I mean, they, yeah, as I said, the precision driving uh, weeds in the row. This one disturbs nearly 100% of the soil, including in the row, and because those uh, tines, they sort of shake as they go through the ground there, and, and uh, just like the s tine, uh, Danish tines do. Uh, prevents hilling, creates smoother fields. It's got the spring-assisted lift on it. And this, this tine weeder, they say, easily adapts to various row and crop spacings. It's ideal for corn, soybeans, and effective in other forms of produce as well. Okay, now we have the Miller Tine Weeder here. This is from Mervyn Miller out in LaGrange, uh, Indiana. He makes fork carts uh, and has got a cultivator that will be in here a little bit later too that uh, has uh, been very successful for him. This one sells for $2,600. Uh, Yoder Farm Supply will handle it for you up here in Michigan. Of course, this one also covers four rows and one pass. you got the steel or uh, you can get air tires on here as well. Now. Uh, this has a nice design here with a swivel type uh, arrangement on top there for allowing the, uh, the tines frame, the tines to stay in contact with the ground all the time as much as possible. And also the arrangement where, uh, you can show us maybe on top there, uh, that's, yeah, okay, back and forth, uh, that's good. And then the depth, the depth, uh, well, yeah, the, that one. So that has a nice depth. If you want to make them, uh, set them up a little bit more, straight to give a little bit more force or if you want to do like uh, what I see the the operator is doing here is keeping the tines back a little bit less uh, damaging maybe to the uh, primary crop of corn, corn there helps you today lose your trash. Yeah. Helps lose your and it helps you lose your trash too okay yeah so there is there's another tine weeder a great a great uh, new uh, or old old technique that's come back and then we have the uh, tine weeder that uh, John Byler is showing you there from, he's from down in Ronks, Pennsylvania. This is a three section tine weeder. Uh, look at it carefully when you get a chance. It's, when I talk about the floating uh, units there, I think this one floats about as independently as any that I've seen because you've got the chains on the front of the uh, units there up against on the frame of the, uh, of the tiller there, of the, uh, the machine. And then you got those bars going back through that are stable and they're you got the u uh shape coming up over the back of the bar there which lets the back of this unit uh shift a lot more than some of the others i believe uh that we've seen is you've got the depth control there on all three units and you got the hydraulics the pump hydraulics on it which helps to fold it up and helps to put it up and down so you have two two handles there uh maybe uh folding up there john is that hard to show there you go. There you go. And then you let her down. Uh, it's designed for wheat, trail, corn, soybeans, etc. Use every five to nine days here. I thought I saw this yesterday. Every five to nine days before weeds emerge for best control. So you want to stay in front of the weeds. My mom always said about her garden, if she sees the weeds, it's too late. The tines in the gang pulling points are adjustable to different crop stages. So again, another really nice design on a on a tine weeder there uh, for Horse Progress Day 2018. Okay, Ty Harrell again providing the horsepower here this morning with Sam Bud and Neil the Spotted Draft. You can go ahead, Ty. Uh, talk a little bit about these guys that are farming. They're using these horses every day. These horses probably don't work as hard as those. They, they don't uh, do as many acres with the horses, if you will. They came a long way, but just tells you a lot about the painters. They've been out here, they've been quiet, they've been doing a good job. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information, or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.